Hello and welcome. Let us look at question 3. You name UCE. It says charcoal was burnt in a charcoal stove as shown in figure 1. So for this question you should be able to tell that here we are having our charcoal stove and this is our charcoal. Here we have our charcoal. This is the charcoal. Here we have air coming into our charcoal stove from the base. So the question says, name the substance that was produced at zone Q, R and T. So when you look at our air coming from the bottom, it will interact with this charcoal at the bottom of this charcoal stove. So you'll find that this charcoal here will have access to enough air. So we can assume that there is some excess air or enough air. And in this case, Usually the active part of air will be oxygen. So the charcoal in zone T will actually undergo complete combustion because there is enough oxygen to produce our carbon dioxide gas. So in zone T, there is enough air. So usually there is complete oxidation to produce carbon dioxide gas. So the substance produced at zone Q will be carbon dioxide or you can call it carbon for oxide it's the same thing however as our air continues to move you'll find that the charcoal particles or the charcoal in region r will not have enough oxygen as compared to the ones in t so we shall have incomplete combustion in this region where we shall form our carbon monoxide gas so in region r we shall actually be forming carbon monoxide which you can also call carbon to oxide it's also the same thing now lastly we go to zone q the charcoal at the top of our charcoal stove this charcoal will actually have access to air even from the top here so you'll find that it will undergo also complete oxidation just like the charcoal at the bottom even if we have air this side there's also some air this side even if it's not shown it's assumed to be obvious so at that point we shall also undergo the same reaction as in zone t so we shall be having the substance being formed will be carbon dioxide because our charcoal at the top here will be reacting with the air present and will have enough oxygen to always undergo complete combustion to form carbon dioxide those are the substances for q r and t part b state structural difference between charcoal and graphite they just need only one structural difference when you look at charcoal and graphite we can note down these two differences we can say graphite is crystalline while charcoal is amorphous in nature what do we mean by crystalline usually crystalline you have a definite shape there's a shape you can say that these atoms are arranged in this format while with charcoal being amorphous it will not have any regular shape so has no definite shape let us write here definite shape while this one has a hexagonal shape if you remember the structure of our graphite it tends to form hexagonal layers so if you say that it has a hexagonal shape it shouldn't be that confusing so these are some of the differences you can give because they said structural differences name one chemical property in which charcoal resembles graphite now for this one we both know that charcoal and graphite are both made up of carbon atoms so if we burn one of them in oxygen we shall obviously form carbon dioxide gas so they both burn in air to form carbon dioxide gas so we have our carbon dioxide gas they they both undergo this reaction here that's a good chemical property because with chemical properties we are looking at chemical reactions how does it react with other elements and in this case it's easier to deal with oxygen that's all i had for you today thanks for watching stay safe